<laughs> Hi, welcome back. My name is Lindsay and today is uh, Tuesday, May 26th and this is my video podcast where I share things that I'm making, like mostly knitting, natural dye, some crochet, sewing, things like that. If you didn't catch my last episode, I was in the process of um, getting ready to show our house because we were living in a bungalow in the suburbs. Um, it had just turned 100 years old. I loved that house. We put a lot of blood, sweat, and tears into that place and we lived there for about eight years. And it was our first home. So um, it was really an emotional thing to sell it. Um, but I'm really grateful because the process went by relatively quickly. Um, shortly after I finished recording, we left and that weekend we had like 35, 40 people come see it. We ended up accepting an offer the following Tuesday. I should mention this is all kind of prior to COVID-19, just prior to COVID-19 um, related uh, stay at home orders and social distancing and everything. This is just when we were starting to realize that this was spreading really fast and that it was gonna come to Oregon. So, um, we just kind of got that part of it over with in the nick of time and then um, proceeded to freak out <laughs> for the next month and a half or so, wondering if we'd made a giant mistake. There's just a lot of uncertainties and we were just like, whoa, this is a lot of change for this period of time. And it, it was just really scary and we, yeah. So we had a lot of anxiety and I know a lot of other people are having anxiety around it too for various reasons and so it's you know it just it is what it is but um we stuck through it and we um closed on this place almost exactly a month ago and i'm really glad that we uh gave ourselves like a week to move here because we weren't really able to get childcare, so it just took a really long time to move because we had to negotiate the kids naps and everything and it was it was brutal. <laughs> it was so brutal. But we did it and we're here and um, we are living in a double wide manufactured home on about four acres and I'm really glad that we did this. I can say that now because we're here and <laughs> mostly unpacked. But yeah, there's a lot of work. The property that we own now was kind of connected to our neighbors because they were um, all family at one point. I think that it was always intended that they would keep this house and that house and the combined property within the family, but it just didn't turn out that way for whatever reason. And so um, they were on a shared well. There were no monuments in place to delineate our property from their property. So we have been trying to get all that sorted. We just got ourselves a well dug and we're kind of still in the process of kind of working that out. Um, we finally got a survey done last week and so now we are starting the process of putting up a privacy fence. We also are really hoping to get some animals, um, probably some Nigerian dwarf goats. I'm, my goal is to have them by fall because um, I'd really love to get started with having our own milk. And then I'd like to be able to add either fiber goats or um, maybe some sheep, but the fencing all needs to be redone. So yeah, as you can imagine, it's just been um, a crazy period of time and we're just go, 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 go right now. Um, but about a week ago, I got sort of my office space sorted. And when I was done organizing everything, I sat down in front of the computer and just like knit for three straight hours. And that was for me. <laughs> the first time that this felt like home. So um, I've just been trying to prioritize doing that for a little while every night because it makes me feel so much better. So I've been getting some some things done, um, though there's not a whole lot. But So I don't have any finished objects to share today, but I do have several works in progress, um, a 
quilt that I've been working on and I am really close to finishing a couple projects and then I have some other things that I will share today too just to kind of like I don't know beef up the episode a little bit because um I don't want it to be too short <laughs> I'm actually gonna kick this off by sharing um, this quilt top that I've been working on. Um, this I made during uh, the month and a half or so that we were waiting on um, the house buying and selling process basically because I wanted to get this top made while I was still living at the old place because that's where I dyed all the fabric and I just kind of felt sentimental about it. So um, all of the fabrics are naturally dyed, even the neutrals. Some of them are dyed using tea, some of them are dyed using coffee. There's a slight variation on all of it and um, you know it's not perfect. I am new to quilting and um, a lot of these don't line up even though I tried to make that happen <laughs> um, but I don't mind I I think it makes it even more special and kind of quaint um, I used a tutorial as guidance from Sarah B of farm and folk um, if you follow her on Instagram she has um, sort of a tutorial highlight and I think she also has has a blog post where she shares kind of how her process and um, that quilt was different it was like a different style than this but I still got a lot of use out of her tutorial and she's just a very inspiring quilt maker anyway um, you should definitely check her out and she's natural dyes too so um, yeah I, I really enjoyed doing this I've only ever made two other quilts in my life and both of those were done using the paper piecing method which is like completely by hand um very time consuming but beautiful um and this i just did using the sewing machine and <laughs> i can see myself doing this again i probably won't do the paper piecing method again just because uh for me um i just don't have the patience for that anymore but uh, I can see myself being a uh, sewing machine quilt maker. <laughs> I thought this was a lot of fun. And I will probably do the quilting part of it. Um, I'm gonna try um, using sashiko thread. I have some and I'll probably do that part by hand um, and that's fine. But for piecing the top together. I really like using the sewing machine and I can see myself doing this again, even though I find cutting <laughs> all the squares really fiddly work. Um, still, like once you start putting, putting it together, it goes by really fast and it's very addictive. Seeing it all come together, it's really cool. So I don't know when I'm going to finish this project, but um, it's for my daughter's bed and I'm not really in any rush. Um, I'll just do it when I feel like doing it, basically. I might even work on another top before I do the quilting part of it. I don't know, we'll see. But I'm really happy with it and I'm glad that I got it done while I was at the other house. So for my knitting, um, I can't remember how far I was into my Acer cardigan in the last episode, but I did finish the body and I, I even blocked it and tried it on and I'm really happy with how the yarn bloomed. It's been kind of sitting here in the basket for a while so it's not as bloomy as it was. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm really happy with this. I love Brooklyn Tweed yarn, it's so good. I actually thought I was gonna finish this project because I was um, kind of knitting on it 
all the time there for a while during that like really frenzied anxious period of time where we were waiting on like everything to happen with selling our house and buying the new one um but I ended up I can't remember I don't even remember what happened but it just I had to set it aside and um this is the second sleeve the first sleeve is done here's the first sleeve And I am not somebody who really struggles to knit sleeves. Um, I think that they're fun to knit, actually. Um, and, and I do magic loop, which I know not everybody likes. But for me, I just kind of turn off my brain and knit. <laughs> and I like doing that. I like having just my fingers moving and my brain not having to think too much sometimes. Probably shared these before. This is a progress keeper by... Uh, Maria of Wool and Forest. I love her um, progress keepers and her stitch markers. They're so beautiful. So this is the second sleeve. Um, I, I don't imagine it'll take me too much longer to get this off the needles because um, I'm working on another project right now that I'm almost finished with and then once I'm done with that I'll probably just turn to this and finish it. Get it done real quick. I was hoping that I would have it done before summer, but it's not gonna happen. <laughs> so my next work in progress is called The Carnish Shawl um, by Erin Clayton. Um, I'll see if I can show you a picture. I don't know how well you can see that, but it's got eyelets, and then on the edge, it's a seed, st uh, seed stitch section. Erin is generously donating one pattern to each of the winners of the Natural Dye Make Along. So I thought, and she also gave me um, a pattern. So I thought that it was only fitting to choose one of her patterns using yarn that I naturally dyed. And this yarn was one of the last yarns that I dyed at the previous house. I'm not sentimental at all or anything. So this yarn is 100% Targi yarn, and I dyed it with acorns, which turned it sort of a pale yellow. Each of these skeins is 250 grams, so I did 750 grams of yarn in a big pot, um, but the pot was pretty full. So um, after I was done dyeing the yarn with the acorns, I then added an iron modifier, and because it was like super full, it kind of there were certain areas of the yarn where it didn't quite absorb as much of the iron as others and it gave it kind of a variegated or maybe like a tonal quality which I really like so there's more yellow areas and then there's um, more gray areas and it's kind of hard to capture on right now but it's just really subtle and pretty. The Carnishaw pattern calls for like a worsted or an Aran weight yarn and this is a worsted weight yarn so I thought it would be perfect. And I've gotten pretty far on the shawl. I have finished the eyelet section. And I'm now starting on the seed stitch section, which if you know me, I am, you know, I'm a sucker for both eyelets and textured uh, stitches. I love seed stitch. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna keep knitting along on this until the pattern says to stop and then I might actually add a little bit more seed stitch, uh, depending on how much yarn I have left. I think this is how much I'm working with right now. And I think I'm just gonna aim for finishing the cake. But I love this yarn. It's um, it's not an itchy yarn at all, um, unless you're really, really sensitive. Uh, but it's one of my favorite bases to dye on. It takes uh, color really well, and um, it's got kind of like a bouncy quality to it. It's just really nice to work with. It's really nice to dye with, and I, I think it shows stitches really well. Um, yeah, it's just one of my favorite bases that I work with. And I've been enjoying seeing how that variegated color kind of plays out in the shawl itself. 
which you can see really well in the stockinette section. So my last work in progress is yet another one of these crazy pairs of sport weight socks that I've been sharing just over the last three episodes or so. And I really hesitated to even share this today because um, I just keep talking about this and it's nothing new. Like it's the same thing that I've been talking about, but um, I just think it's important to show that you don't have to knit something <laughs> different every time. Um, I get a lot of satisfaction from knitting something that I know is going to fit really well, that's gonna um, bust through my stash and that it just like, it's a sure thing, you know? Cause when you're knitting something new, especially if it's a garment piece or something, um, I always, almost always, I almost always inevitably have to rip out something, redo something. And it's all part of the process and I've learned to accept that. But sometimes it's nice just to have something that you know is gonna work, it's very comforting. Um, so this pair of socks is for my husband and um, I always knit his uh, heel flap and gusset a little bit longer than for me. Um, and he's got some different numbers than I do but they're all up on Ravelry in a project page. And I just wanted to share that I'm still doing this, still loving these socks. And um, I, they're just the best socks I've ever made. They fit the best. They're the ones that I go to every time and they're all holding up really well because it's uh, two strands held together. And yeah, love these. <laughs> so if you want some, I'm not gonna go over the details again. They're all on Ravelry, I'll link um, to my product page where I have some notes uh, if you want to learn more about this or just watch any of the previous episodes that are more recent and yeah. So yeah, I know that that sock is sort of a repetitive thing, but I think of it as a nice segue into this next section um, that I wanna talk about where I share some of the patterns that I have knit multiple times because I am someone who really likes to knit something more than once if it is something that I love, something that I use. Um, I really enjoy the comfort of that. So I'm gonna quickly show you a few projects that I've made multiple times. Um, I'm not gonna go too into detail about these because there's uh, Ravelry project pages for all of them. But yeah, I just wanna share some of these because they're, they're favorites and I would knit them again. And I use them and I often gift them that sort of thing. So this is the first one. It's the Marichal and I knit this using Patton's Classic Wool. This is back when I got most of my yarn from the box craft stores before I knew that you could do anything else really. So I ended up wearing this quite a lot and I made like a little bit of a modification down here at the bottom because I think that in the original pattern it just the eyelets go all the way down but I decided I would just wanted to kind of close that up and do the border differently. So I made one using this Patton's Classic Wool and then I made another version using, I believe it was Knit Pick Swish. This is my favorite because it's bigger. I made it giant, mm -hmm. made it bigger than the pattern called for by far. And this is like, a blanket and it's so soft and cozy and I just yeah I wear this all the time um, it's one of my go-to shawls and it's held up really well and uh, I made one more version of this using uh, Knit Picks City Tweed it was like a purpley pink tweedy yarn and I made that one for um, my stepmom for I think it was Christmas or a birthday or something like that. So this was another project that I made multiples of. It's called the Granny Shawlette and it's actually crocheted rather than knit. And I made, I think four of these, maybe five of them. The other ones I made as a gift for my bridesmaid and my maid of honor during our wedding. And um, those I made using, I think acrylic yarn. <laughs> Again, this is back before um, I knew that you could buy yarn anywhere else. Um, but for my version, I use Lion Brand Fisherman's Wool. Um, I was always drawn 
to the skeins of line brands, Fisherman's Wool, you know, those giant skeins. Um, and really that should probably have been my first clue that I was a sucker for the more like rustic yarns. <laughs> but this I wear all the time. And because it was crocheted, it only took maybe like a day to finish. I, I, um, I was a crocheter before I was ever a knitter because knitting was a little bit harder for me to pick up. But, but um, I don't do it as often anymore and I think that that's a shame and I've been wanting to pick up my crochet hooks a little bit more. And I, yeah, I love the heck out of this shawl. I wear it all the time. It's just light. Um, it's just the right size. Um, it's airy because it's got the holes. It's really versatile. And I love this color of brown. Um, I just really love it. It's kind of the perfect gift project too. Um, another thing that I've crocheted several times is the Willow Catkin Hood. And I shared a version of this in the podcast like an episode or two ago. Um, but yeah, it's another crocheted project and I wear this all the time. I've made it, I think three times total. One for me, one for a friend of mine, and I made another version recently for my daughter. Um, you know, and I made this in like a day. I really love crochet. I mean, it goes so fast and it eats so much yarn, but like, I love this hood. I wear it all the time, especially if it's raining. Um, for me, having something that I can put over my head that isn't gonna just completely mess up my curls is a big deal. So, and this like stays on my head it doesn't really move around and it's got like a really cute like top. <laughs> so yeah, I love this. I've made it many times. This is another hat, uh, the, the Reiki hat or the Reiki hat. Um, I've made this two times, maybe three times. I don't know where my gray version is. It's the one that I wear most often, but uh, my husband steals these hats frequently. But I love it because it's a garter and because it just, I don't know, I feel like it sits on my head pretty well. I like slashy, slouchy hats because again with the hair it's kind of, um, it's hard to get something that I can uh, wear that isn't going to completely mess up my, mess up with my bangs. Anyway, and I just like how it sits for a slouchy hat. And then the pattern that kind of takes the cake in terms of how many times I've, I've made it. Uh, this is the Autumn Hat by Jane Richmond. It was one of my first knits, like where I felt like I was a knitter. I've made this probably 15 times. Um, that year that I learned to knit, I made everybody one of these for Christmas. And I still see a bunch of my friends wearing these around. It's probably gotten to the point where they don't even know where they got the hat <laughs> anymore. But there's just something about this pattern that like, um, it just, it's a really good solid pattern. And I made most of them with a uh, Lion Brand Thick and Quick yarn. Um, and I find that when it comes to gift knits, if you use something that's got acrylic in it that they can throw in the washer and dryer, um, you know, it lasts longer for them because most people don't know how to deal with wool. So this pattern was one of those where I just kind of observed that um, it turns out a little bit better for gifts than like 100% wool. Cause I, I did eventually start transitioning to using wool and making these in wool for gifts and they weren't getting worn as much and then they would like just disappear because people um, probably threw them in the washer and dryer. Um, it's one of the reasons why I'm a little bit more sparing about gift knits these days because I don't tend to enjoy knitting using acrylic as much. So I'm a little bit more selfish about my knits, but I love the autumn hat. Um, I make all my hats a little bit bigger, again, because of the hair thing. Um, and so my versions are a little longer and baggier than most other people's, but, um, yep. Nice, solid, slouchy hat. I have another version here that I wear often. And then my husband has like a red 
like a maroon red color that he wears all the time. I think we've got three or four versions of it here. But yeah, I think I've knit a good 15 of these throughout the time that I've been a knitter. And it's enjoyable because even though it's seed stitch, it goes really fast because you use such thick gauge yarn. And yeah, there are other um, patterns that I've knit multiple times as well, but those are the ones that I kind of still come back to. Let's talk about the natural dye make along, which is ending in less than a month. I don't know where the time has gone, but here we are. Um, it ends June 21st, so if you are a fast knitter or crocheter or whatever, um, you still have a little bit of time. Um, I am just now starting to put the prizes together and to get all that kind of sorted. Um, and I'm going to be choosing one prize from the finished objects thread in Ravelry and one prize from the natural dye M-A-L-F-O hashtag on Instagram. If you want a refresher on the rules, um, if you are still interested in participating or you're kind of, you can't remember what the rules are, I will link them below um, in the down bar. So I've already talked briefly about Erin Clayton. She's going to be donating one... Um, pattern per prize winner. Um, I also have some yarn here from Annika of um, Rosemary and Pines that I'm going to share today. And I posted about this on Instagram, but I want you to see it. So she is donating two sets of mini skeins that she dyed using uh, logwood and cochineal. And this is on her um, Luster Sock DK, which is 100% German merino wool. And look how beautiful these are. Turn it around a little bit so you can see. Yeah. Oh, I love it. So pretty. Really beautiful yarn. Makes me want to die with logwood and cochineal again. <laughs> it's been a while. So yeah, I've got two sets of these for the prizes. And um, yeah, very, whoever is going to win these are, are very lucky. So if you are interested in donating for the make along, um, we are getting pretty close to the deadline. But if you want to kind of squeeze in, then please make sure that you send me an email. Um, I have a really hard time keeping up with my DMs. So please send me an email at awoodennest at gmail.com and I am much more likely to see it. If you've already sent one and you haven't gotten a reply, please resend it because that means I missed it and um, yeah, for whatever reason. Um, but that is the best way to get in contact with me. But um, yeah, the make along ends June 21st and we are almost there. So uh, yeah, yeah. I think that's going to be it for me today. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in and I will see you in the next episode. Mm -hmm.